Hi. Hey, it's Bridget. Oh, welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. I am recording this early, a few days early, because I'm a little afraid I'm going to lose my voice. I've got a bit of something, something going on here. So that's why you get Sunday Morning Coffee like this. Okay. All right. And I have a happy face shirt on because I'm really trying my best to put my best face forward. It's hard because I don't feel like this face is so pretty right now. It's very not very much not so pretty, but hey, whatever. We got to show up, right? You're going to show up. I'm going to show up. We're going to show up. We're going to have conversation on this Sunday morning coffee podcast. Whoa, oh, I just almost knocked over my phone here. All right. Ooh, me oh my. Me oh my. Wait, what am I, like 100? Okay. Oh, no, I don't have my glasses. <laughs> wow, Bridget. Okay, so prepared. Hey, at least I'm here in present. I'm doing this. Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do it like this. And we're going to see what happens. <laughs> oh. oh, good goddess be with me. All right. So I'm going to read from this book. This book has been a saving grace for me. You can tell I have used it so much. It is so tattered. <laughs> Melody Beatty, Journey to the Heart, Daily Meditations on the Path to Freeing Your Soul. And uh, Melody Beatty does a lot of work in recovery. She's actually a therapist from Minnesota, where I live. Not that far, actually. She's in southern Minnesota, Afton, I think, is where she was. I don't know if she's still there, but it's not far from me. And uh, her work is best. She's best known for Codependency No More. If you haven't read that book, I recommend it. I've read it twice. Good book. For anyone, not just those in addiction, or in recovery of any kind. It's a good, I think, perspective about relationships in general, especially after we've all kind of lived through the COVID. It's really a good idea maybe to get some perspective, healthy perspective about relationships. All right. All right, Journey to the Heart, Daily Meditations on the Path to Freeing Your Soul. This is set up like you read this and it kind of corrects you for the day or sets you for the day kind of thing. And this is later in the day, which is fine because I can use a reset. So at any time you could pick up your book and open to a page and randomly pick one and read it, or you could actually follow the calendar and read it. Okay, so this is for August 5th, which is today's date. It says, respect life. The message came softly, gently during the sweat lodge ceremony. I went... I went to in Sedona at the end of the evening, the shaman thanked the rocks for glowing with heat, bringing that passion. Oh my gosh. To evening symbolizing passion in our lives. She thanked The wound that created the fire <clears throat> that heated, oh God, that heated the rocks for giving its life so that we could have warmth, so that we could celebrate this event. She thanked the water for cooling. And she thanked God for life, for each of our lives, for our lifetimes on this planet. Respect life, all of life. The world moves so fast. It's so easy to forget to respect all that lives, all that is. We get so hurried, so buried, we take life for granted. Take time to remember that all life is sacred. <clears throat> all that is part of creation is a creation. And the same life force moves through us all with all its truth tests worries, heartaches, and sometimes heartbreaks. Life is a gift. A few short years on this planet, then we are gone. 
Do not spend it worrying about all that has gone wrong. You will miss the lesson. You will miss the gift, the gift of life. Respect life, all of it. Respect and honor your own. Wow, I'm sorry for stumbling through that. That's just really, it's bringing up a lot for me personally. Oh my goodness. Um, the Sweat Lodge piece is extraordinarily personal for me. I have a mentor now in the afterlife, Red Turtle Bear. Actually, my youngest son's um, godfather. And uh, he gifted me the energy of being a fire bear. I have been to sweat lodge ceremonies and I was only in one for just a small amount of time. I had an experience after his death. And um, most of the time I would just stay out by the fire, you know? The fire element is really strong this month in August. It's extraordinarily a catalytic energy. It's also meant like Kalima to, to consume and burn away what is no longer needed. And that can be very difficult and challenging for all of us. I don't think the place that I'm connecting into for this Sunday morning coffee is about respecting life. I think it's about being life. And the best way to be life is to be love, to know love so intimately, so deeply, so purely that it is not afraid of the fire. It is not afraid to be burned because it recognizes that the burnt, charred earth is the place where you scrape away the past and allow for the renewal and the new building to begin, the new life. So this is about being life. And the best way I know that that can happen is by being love. And that sounds like a whole basket of woo-woo stuff and what the heck and how is that? And what do I do? And love is not an emotion. It's a state of being. It's an incredible awareness of alignment where you are so connected wholly and fully and completely to yourself that then every other interaction, connection, relationship that you have brings to it the fullness of the gift that you have inside, which is the connection to your source, which is you. That's what self-love is. Everybody's trying to achieve it in all these strange ways, when really the truth is, it's a commitment to your presence to show up inside of yourself. To be alone with yourself is sacred. It is not a place for loneliness and sadness, although that will coexist with the pure, simple sweetness of the love that is true and the most beautiful connection is inside. Sometimes we meet people in our lives whether they be human people or spirit guides, that will bring to us a richness of understanding about this power of this center point that we have, this alignment that we have just naturally. It just traces your spine, the scaffolding of support, a structure for energy to move with, in, through, and out of you to honor the wholeness, the embodiment of this life experience. It is hard to know this simply with the mind or the intellect, although many philosophers and also poets could certainly add to the flavor of the energy of being life. And in doing so, connect us to that deeper aspect in ourselves of love. Love is not something that's given to you. It is something that you are. And sometimes we have to be brought to the edge of death or be forced to observe it and witness it in someone that we care about deeply or love to know what we actually have within us, what we are here to be. And then through that, through our actions and our behaviors with conscious cognitive choices, decisions we make that are expressed in our actions and our behaviors, that we are then fulfilling the intention for which we came into this body, into this lifetime, which is not about the baggage of the, the transgressions or inadequate past mistakes or missteps we may have, 
it is truly about here and the relationship here that you have with the moment, which connects you to life and to love as you are being it. It is not an emotion. Living is not an emotion. Love isn't even an emotion. From what I'm seeing, it looks like it is the saucer for which the coffee mug sits on. Love is the saucer, the base, the foundation, and life is the mug with all the experiences and the different flavors of whatever beverage you've got in there right now. I have some tea. And so it is. Things do not happen haphazardly. We don't just move through life bumping around. It feels like that sometimes, yes. I agree 100%, it feels that way. But feelings are all temporary, which means that's not really the state that you are in. At any given moment, you can choose through the awareness of being life and through the purity of that baseline, simple baseline connection of being love. Again, not about feeling, being different. Being shows up in the cumulative energy that is your thoughts and your emotions and your intuition expressing outward through the body's actions, behaviors. Then through your awareness, you notice the patterns or the rhythms and then can choose based on that information collectively what is in alignment for you as the whole of your being as you are moving with life, co-creating with life as you are in alignment, regardless of what you are struggling with and suffering through. It is hard. I know at times it is hard. I know at times it is so hard to just show up or get out of bed. And you might have swings and emotions and moods. You might have clinical things going on and, and health physical body disease or mental health challenges, you might have a whole host of circumstances, situations, or people that are not helping you to be aligned. But the good news is, is it's not about them. It's not about anyone else. It is about you. This is your life. You get to be it. This is your life. You be it. There's no excuses, okay? There's no time to make excuses for anything anymore, okay? There's no time. If you've been around for the last few years and had some conscious awareness of the pandemic that happened and some of the natural disasters that have occurred and some of the unspeakable tragedies that have been popping up in the world, whether they directly affect you or energetically affect you, you are affected you will then understand and can accept this common knowing that time is precious and valuable and nothing is guaranteed, including you in any given moment, stopping at the coffee shop, running into Target for something. Your entire life in a moment could completely change. It can change for the better, you can make a choice that leads to other choices and new opportunities. And it can look really crappy and hard at first, but it can show up as this, oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. And other times it can be extraordinarily difficult where you feel like you're left with no other choice but to choose you. And that's the hardest decision to make is to choose you, which is the choice of being life, which is the choice of connecting then to the pure source of you, which is love. Again, not an emotion, a core source in you. You are, you get to be love. And the only way you can do that is when you're connected to yourself. Yeah, it's hard to sift through some of those heavy feelings, the depression, the anger, the judgment, the other people's pain, 
all of the things that you as an empathic, sensitive spirit will definitely encounter over and over again. To release judgment and, and the need to sacrifice yourself for other people, that takes practice. But the only way you can be successful at it is to be in alignment with the recognition that you are here to be life and life is dynamic and it's fluid and it's very forgiving. It's new every moment, new every minute. And so too then you came here with the intent to be love, not become it, not share it, not, it, not just expressing it, but to be it, to really know yourself as that, regardless of all the other, maybe sidesteps you may have made in this lifetime or things you wish you could have done differently. Like if anybody's a parent here, you totally know what I'm coming from here. You totally look back and experience this with your kids and think I could have been a better parent. Totally have that reflection right now. I could have been a better parent to this kid. I could have done this differently for that kid. That is normal. But that Monday morning quarterbacking does not help you feel love because you are love. It always exists and it can soften the energy of the hardships that you've felt like you have maybe inflicted on other people. Maybe you feel like the bad guy, or maybe you've received that from others, from other people that were not so good. Maybe you've been the victim. It doesn't matter what label or what you call that perspective in your relationships and your life experiences. All of your feelings are valid and justified. And yet you still here now in your purest perfection, in your alignment, which is what you're really seeking, you are at your core love. You are that saucer that sits, holds the cup of life and you are just love. There is no requirement, expectation, qualification. There is no resume that is required. You are just that. Because source, God, creator, universe exists in you, that tiny speck of light. Even if you feel so much darkness, you have that. That is what your spirit is. That is what intuition is. That's what connects us to everybody and everything. That's what we, I think, feel like sometimes that makes things hard. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There's just a misunderstanding about what hard is. We hold on too long to stuff that is not ours. Now, is that respecting life? Probably not. Because it kind of has the little bit of a vibe of, I'm going to think that you can't handle your shit. And so therefore, I'm going to step in and fix things for you, whether it be with a mom, um, a mom and a child, or in a relationship, or at work or what have you with a new person you're trying to train in. You guys know that, right? You have people that micromanage, right? Right? Or can't seem to give their stuff up because it has so much value to them or because they're afraid somebody else is going to screw it up. You know how that goes, right? Well, these are examples of well-meaning, well-intended, trying to, attempting to control we have no control over other people, their decisions and choices, and or outcomes, because we really are being choreographed. And each of us is contributing. We're co-conspirators in this, co-conspirators for sure, and co-creators. And sometimes somebody missteps and they step on your foot and it hurts and you got to sit that dance out. And that's just what happens. That's, that's just what happens. So over worrying or overly trying to step in or fix something for somebody else really kind of means you don't trust that person to do their part. And I know there's a lot of evidence, it seems, that we maybe shouldn't trust some people to do their part. However, that's just an ego-minded, tiny little personality thing. We have to recognize that there is a bigger energetic happening here. And it's not that things are faded. No, no, you predict your future by making choices that create it. People aren't just dropped into your life randomly to just magically make everything better or what have you. But, and this is a big, beautiful but, 
but they will change you. There will be opportunities through other people, relationships, experiences, life, that will cause you to pause and question what it is that you really want. What is it that you are showing up for and expressing? And if that outside version of yourself is in alignment with this inner alignment, knowing, this knowing of being life, how are you being life? Other people come into our lives to cause us to pause and question, to evaluate, not overthink or analytically evaluate, but to feel energetically sense. Are you connected to the love that you are? Not how that person makes you feel, not how you want to influence life or a project or uh, share your gift. Not that. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. How you are connected inside yourself to love, to being love, and to being life. Those are just the two core principles that are your soul, your spirit. That is your truth, that. And other stuff that seems kind of random or strange or, oh my gosh, it's so synchronistic. Yeah, there's patterns. It makes sense. There's patterns and patterns repeat themselves. Unless you're conscious and awake in alignment with yourself, being life and being love so that then you can make choices and expressions that are so from your center that just promote support the continued co-creation of your life, of the expression of you through this body as a soul, connecting and moving with other bodies and souls. Okay, nice breath in. Exhale out through the heart. Did that just land? It's profound. You might want to go back and re-listen to this one. I know I will because that that stuff, that's channeled stuff, you guys. <laughs> Sometimes that happens in sessions. Actually, if you have had session with me as an intuitive life coach, you know that sometimes I'm like, I say, we all of a sudden something comes in, I just start talking and all of a sudden all this stuff is like here. And I'm like, oh, I should have recorded that. And the person on the other end of the line is like, oh, I'm trying to take notes. That was so good. I'm like, that's for you. <laughs> but wow, is that profound? I wish I knew what the heck I just said. <laughs> it's beautiful. So present for the moment showing up. Life is meant to be lived. I hope that I've inspired your spirit today, filled you with some hope and encouraged you to live your life. It's your life after all. And you get to live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.